Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. It is officially summer, and things are heating up in thoroughbred racing. We got big races uh, all over the country before Saratoga opens. Yeah, I like it, Matt. We're, we're, we're going to places that we don't always go. We're going to Altoona, Iowa, for instance. We're going to uh, uh, Shelbyville, Indiana. But we're going to start in New York. We're going to start at uh, Belmont Park. And I think this uh, edition of the Grade 1 $750,000 Belmont Derby Invitational, Matt, came up really good. Let's jump right into that field. There it is, a field of 11, a mile and a quarter. On the turf, of course, Matt, and uh, you're seeing some pretty accomplished horses, but also some pretty uh, 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 potentially very, very good turf courses, turf horses in here. And I'm not even sure who's going to be the favorite. I, I think they might end up with the European pair, but uh, it's a wide open race. Yeah, and I think that Naira's happy with the size of the field. They're happy that they've got the mixture of horses that they were hoping for uh, some nice horses coming over from europe and good quality americans andrew balding had the foxes uh getting good at the end of his two-year-old season over in europe and he's carried that form over to his three-year-old season that a good race to uh to start the season in the craven and then probably the biggest prep for the epsom derby the english derby uh, the Foxes won the uh, the Dante, the Group 2 Dante, nicely. Last time he was fifth in the Epsom Derby, but it wasn't a bad performance uh, at all for the Foxes. Yeah, a, a really nice horse, as you've described. Uh, a, a Group 2 winner to end his campaign last year and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, got a Group 2 win this year. Uh, place then a group three, try to group one, a uh, really good quality uh, European uh, turf horse who at the top of his game is going to be tough. Yeah, he looks good. He'll be dropping down from 12 furlongs to 10 furlongs for this Belmont Derby as he comes to the United States for the first time. So we'll see how sharp he is, but certainly off his form of his last five races or so, the Foxes is definitely one to be drawn to the outside there. The other European is Silver Knot. We've seen Silver Knot over in the States a couple times already, Matt. There's that guy again, trainer Charlie Appleby. Yeah, and uh, uh, he certainly showed up uh, uh, at Belmont Park last month with all the Charlie Appleby fanfare. He was bet down, bet to be the favorite, and I guess you know, you you have to say was a little bit of a disappointment, only finishing third in the Penine Ridge. Um, is he going to bounce back and 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 run better? I assume that they left him over here uh, uh, after the Penine Ridge to train in New York. Yeah, it was a little bit disappointing, but I think he ran it against a couple of very good horses that we're going to talk about. Uh, but he certainly could move forward off that effort that was a prep for the Belmont Derby and of course last year he just missed in the Breeders Cup uh juvenile turf so Silver Knot obviously a, a horse of class both the Foxes and Silver Knot are multiple group winners over in Europe so they bring the class that we see so often come over but then we have a, a slew of nice Americans Matt we could start with Web Slinger just because Web Slinger the number four horse has won a couple stakes in a row out here in Kentucky yeah, and and for Mark Cassie, a web slinger has a terrific turf record in his career. In eight starts, he's got four wins, two seconds, and a third only out of the uh, uh, the top three once. Um, as you mentioned, a couple of nice turf wins heading into this Belmont Derby. He was first in the uh, Audubon at uh, Churchill Downs and was also first in the American turf, which is a grade two. Uh, this is a horse that's in really good form right now. And when Cassie's got them in good form, he runs them. Yeah, Whip Slinger won that American turf two starts back, validated it, as you said, with a win in the Audubon. 
But two starts back, uh, he had some nice odds and he rallied to get up in the final jump. So Web Slinger, a multiple stakes winner, has some class. Let's also talk about uh, the two Americans that finished narrowly ahead of Silver Knight, not last time in the Pennine Ridge. And, and the winner was Kalik. And uh, since Kalik has uh, come up north to uh, Belmont Park for trainer Chad Brown, one of two in the field for the always dangerous Chad Brown in these big turf races. Kalik has looked really good. He went wire to wire last time in the Pennine Ridge. Yeah, uh, only two uh, in the race for Chad. Um, sometimes three, four, even five in uh, in the big turf races. Uh, yeah, did it on the front end. I don't know if we describe that as a speed horse, but as a horse that uh, does good work, uh, setting the pace and controlling the race uh, out front out front which can be dangerous uh in these kind of turf horses turf races where everybody just kind of sits behind uh waiting to make their move but this horse out front just doesn't stop three in a row moving from a maiden special weight to an allowance to that victory uh in the penine ridge yeah i'm glad you mentioned the speed remember classic causeway of course matt uh uh, surprising uh, before last, uh, last year in this race. But uh, Kalik got some slow paces recently, and he's controlled the race on the front end, like when he beat both uh, uh, Far Bridge and Silver Knot last time. So it'll be interesting to see where Kalik is positioned early, but he should be forwardly placed at the very least. But you see, they have him second behind a longer shot, uh, although an interesting long shot, longer shot, at least to me. His name is Wizard of Westwood. We'll talk more about him in a minute. But uh, there's not a ton of pace here. And you see Kalik, one of the favorites, behind uh, a longer shot, Wizard of Westwood, on the Time Form U.S. pace projector. We do, we do need to talk about the horse that split Kalik and Silver Knot in that Pennine Ridge. His name is Far Bridge, Matt, and I think he's kind of unlucky to be only two for four so far. Two nice wins down at Gulfstream Park, uh, but Far Bridge was very good in defeat in both the American Turf, won by Web Slinger, and then last time in the Pennine Ridge. Yeah, uh, uh, certainly a talented turf horse for Todd Pletcher, who is having more and more of the of uh, quality turf horses uh, in his barn, uh, you, know, you mentioned, won his first two on the turf uh, impressively. And yeah, a couple of second places uh, in really good fields behind really good turf horses that we've already talked about. Yeah, he just missed by a nose in the American turf uh, coming up the rail. And last time he was the horse that had the trouble in the Pennine Ridge trying to run down colleagues. So Far Bridge certainly a dangerous horse in here as well. And I think he will be one of the favorites for trainer Todd Fletcher off that uh, kind of trip performance. The other uh, brown horse is redistricting. Who knows how good he is? He's only had one race and he won it big. Uh, Mendelssohn's March has some potential for Kenny McPeak, Bobby O, another Cassie Stakes winner, Cyber Ninja, and Montego could be nice horses. But I want to talk a little bit about Wizard of Westwood, Matt, because he's run nothing but good races. He's got the most speed in the race, and he's won in a mile and a quarter. Yeah, um, you know, it, it, it's always kind of hard to judge the the quality, the class level of horses that are coming from turf careers on the West Coast at Santa Anita. I mean, typically, I'll say, you know, they might be a cut below the uh, – the horses racing on the turf in the east. So a trip from California is often a tough ask. But this one's trained by Michael McCarthy, um, who has a really good record shipping from the west to the east and bringing horses that compete well. I think that is partially because of his tenure as an assistant for Todd Pletcher. Yeah, that's true. Michael McCarthy got to like him. You also got to like Johnny B jumping on uh, Wizard of Westwood, Matt, because if there's one jockey in the country right now that I, I like getting on the lead and then kind of controlling the pace, kind of softening the pace up a little bit while on the lead, Johnny B's my guy. And he gets on Wizard of Westwood, who, I, again, has been consistent, probably getting better with every start, coming off a mile and a quarter uh, win in a stakes race out in California. I agree, though. Europe is up here east coast turf is down here 
and then California turf. So Wizard of Westwood has that to overcome as far as the class of this Belmont Derby. But an interesting long shot for me. All right, Matt, that's Belmont Derby. How about Indiana? They have a Derby, too, on Saturday. And we're going to take a look at that field now, Matt. We have a field of nine, a potential field of nine. I think there's one or two horses that are cross-centered in both the Indiana and the Iowa Derby. So something to keep an eye on Saturday to see where exactly everyone winds up. But uh, it doesn't affect the favorite in the Indiana Derby. Verifying for Brad Cox. Brad Cox likes to travel up uh, uh, Highway uh, 65 north to the Indianapolis area. He goes up there a lot to horseshoe Indianapolis. And he's got the favorite, Verifying. Going a mile on the 16th. Three hundred thousand dollar grade three on Saturday. Yeah, I mean it's hard to go against uh, uh, Brad Cox in these three year old races, whether it's the Derby Trail or now as we move into the summer derbies, uh, etc. Um, Verifying's got a couple of very nice uh, second place finishes. Most recently in the Matt Win, which was won by Disarm, a horse that you know I liked uh, on the uh, Derby Trail that did pretty well in the Kentucky Derby. Um, after you know, before that, uh, Verifying did run in the Derby, finished sixteenth, and his final prep was again a nice second in the Bluegrass Stakes. So dropping down in play us a little bit here to the grade three to the uh, mid-major derby he's the horse to beat yeah and when we were setting these odds you know I, I thought verifying was a level ahead of everybody else but the reason i didn't go lower is because there are so many interesting horses in here there's so many possibilities so many horses of potential or stakes winners who have popped up and it, it makes for kind of an interesting race but it looks like verifying is the lone horse on the A list for me. And then you have a, a bunch of Bs. So the, the, the Bs are going to um, uh, get some attention, but Verifying certainly is the favorite. I think if he runs back to the Matt Wynn or, or the Bluegrass, maybe the Bluegrass especially, he's going to be awfully tough to beat at a mile 16th. I don't think he's a mile and a quarter horse. Mile 16th on a track that generally favors horses who are on or near the lead and verifying probably will be out there matt we'll take an early look at that time form u.s space projector and sure enough there's the favorite verifying that's a good place for the favorite to be out on the lead yeah it sure sounds like it brian at uh uh at indy at indiana um and particularly with this kind of field uh um, he's got a good chance to control the race yeah, control the race and at a distance he probably likes. Uh, Transect is three of four for Paulo Lobo, the one. But uh, the the really interesting horse who has some speed besides verifying is that three horse, Matt. Act a fool. Unfortunately, Larry Rivelli uh, lost his stable star, two fills to injury. He had to be retired recently after the big win in the Ohio Derby. But now Larry Rivelli's after more three-year-old prizes with uh, Act a fool. And uh, since coming up to Hawthorne, he, he had one race at Turfway over the synthetic uh, surface to make his career debut that was he showed nothing. Four races at Hawthorne, he has just toyed with the competition up in Chicago. Sure has. Uh, four impressive victories <clears throat> at Hawth Hawthorne, beginning with his maiden special weight, then put together two nice allowance wins, and, and most recently won the uh, Hawthorne Derby. I don't know. Uh, I find this horse interesting. Maybe I, I'm feeling a little sorry for Larry Ravelli and hoping that uh, Act the Fool can, you know, take away the sting of two Phil's uh, retirement. Possibly. Uh, the other thing about Act the Fool, I, I think he's a horse of big potential. But part of me, being a son of Oscar performance, part of me looks at those four races at Hawthorne as like, He's a talented horse. He's going well right now, but he might be a better turf horse than a dirt horse. Any worries there? Uh, well, I, I don't know if I worry about it, but it sure gives Ravelli another strong option if uh, uh, after this Indiana Derby. If things go well, they can stay on the dirt. If maybe not, they can try the turf. You know, they can go to Saratoga or wherever. Yeah. 
you're right. And, and that Hawthorne Derby, which was a turf race last time, his first yeah. turf race, yeah, uh, really was an impressive performance. That makes me think he fits with graded stakes horses. So interesting to see what Act of Fool can do. There's some others in here that are interesting too. Georgie W has uh, won his only two starts, and he and he did impressively. Uh, hard to know how, how how big a jump he's making in class. The same can be said for On the Stage, who comes from that powerful Steve Asmussen barn, uh, losing three straight at Oakland to begin his career, but his last two at Lone Star. He might be a good one as well. Yeah, and and a horse that likes to run from off the pace. So if uh, horses that are out front uh, start getting tired a little bit, that's a good spot. And with Asmussen uh, in the Midwest at the uh, at Prairie Meadows, you know he he he's tough out there. Yeah, although this this one's Indiana. We're doing Prairie Meadows oh, next. Yeah, well, sorry, Brian. But, but either way, I, I Asmussen is tough everywhere. So <clears throat> your your statement still rings true. Uh, interesting horses on the stage in Georgie W, but they're certainly moving up in class. Another interesting horse to me, Cagliostro, a, a Florida bred. Uh, he, he's only had one stakes race. It was the Louisiana Derby, and he kind of faded that day. He did break through the gate before the race, which may have helped him tiring in the Louisiana Derby at a mile three sixteenths, but comes on, it comes in with a bunch of good races besides that, including last time he just missed running late in an allowance race at Churchill Downs. Yeah. An interesting horse for uh trainer, uh, Cherie DeVoe, the, uh, who uh, was an assistant for Chad Brown for, for many years. Yeah. She's, uh, she's getting better and better. It seems like uh, DeVoe horses are running and Cagliostro is a horse that certainly could pop up and maybe it will be Saturday here in the Indiana Derby. Looking at the field, we probably haven't talked about the two horses that could buy for second choice. I saw in the morning, the official morning line from Indiana, Hayes Strike was clearly second choice. I, I'm not sure that I'm jumping that way, but the way Kenny McPeak has been doing, it seems like he loves the summer and every summer Kenny McPeak wins big races. Hayes Strike is a two-time stakes winner. Uh, coming in off of a well-beaten third behind two fills in the Ohio Derby, but still, he's he's another rallier who's who's done some things. Yeah, he won the uh, Texas Derby uh, at Lone Star before the Ohio Derby. Now he comes back on short notice uh, from the third place finish in the Ohio Derby. I, I don't know if I love the you know coming back this quickly. Yeah, two weeks is uh, is a short uh, turnaround these days, but uh, Kenny McPeak will do that with horses that are going well in his barn. And then Ray's Kane, he still we still remember that Gotham when he was big odds and he came flying down the stretch to win by a lot of lengths on, on an off track at Aqueduct. He's run three races since. He's lost them all. He hasn't finished in the top three and all. But on the other hand, it was the Bluegrass, the Kentucky Derby, and the Matt win last time, and he didn't run poorly in any of them for trainer Ben Colbrook. No, he didn't, but, you know, he, he didn't run particularly well either, but he didn't run bad. He's another one that's cross-entered in the Iowa Derby, so we'll see where uh, this one goes. You know, uh, we've, we've talked before about how it's hard to reproduce those uh, long-shot victories like he had in the Gotham, and th that's been the case thus far. Yeah, but on the other hand, I don't mind those races that he's run. I think uh, potentially if he gets the right trip, he's he's a danger. And maybe uh, a mile 16th trip is a, a good a good trip for him. But Verified did beat him pretty easy last time. The only horse we didn't mention, Matt, is stay in your lane. And we didn't mention him with good reason. <laughs> yeah, that's... Enough, enough, enough said? <laughs> that's for sure. Former uh, uh, maiden claiming 10,000 horse. Yeah, and he, and he still is, still I mean, is. Yeah. claiming yeah. 10,000. All right, so that's the India Derby. Let's go out a little farther west to uh, Altoona, Iowa for Prairie Meadows' big night of racing. Matt mentioned the Iowa Derby. They have the Iowa Oaks. But the best race of that evening out at Prairie Meadows is the Cornhusker. Uh, I remember when uh, Fort Larned won the Cornhusker and the Breeders' Cup Classic the same year, Matt. So uh, don't sleep on the Cornhusker, I guess is what I'm saying. I also remember when the Cornhusker was at Axarbin for years and years out in Nebraska. That track, of course, is no longer with us. But we have a nice field of 10. 
my morning line and the official morning line are slightly different not all that different but slightly different in we have the favorite and the second choice flip-flop the morning line in uh iowa says skippy Longstocking is a tepid choice coming off a disappointing performance in the ben ali yeah uh, uh and uh, before that disappointing uh, finishing in, in the ben ali uh skippy Longstocking was the winner of the grade three challenger at tampa bay downs and uh, uh, with other good races uh, in his PPs, he comes from the barn of trainer Safi Joseph Jr., who uh, I guess now is gotten out of the Churchill Downs doghouse. Yeah, that's right. Churchill Downs has reinstated Safi Joseph. Of course, he had two horses die of a heart attack the week of the Derby. Uh, he was suspended. He couldn't run more miles in the Kentucky Derby, among other horses. But he's uh, he's been cleared of that. So he has uh, Skippy Longstocking as a potential favorite. He, of course, won the West Virginia Derby. He won the Harlan's Holiday. And as Matt mentioned, he won the Challenger. Three grade three races at three different tracks out of his last six. So maybe a deserving favorite. But the horse I listed as the favorite is the local horse, Matt. Ain't life grand. Uh, seven wins, nine starts at Prairie Meadows. Never been out of the money, but seven wins and nine start. Most of them stakes races. He's the Iowa Derby from winner from last year. And after a slow start to this year, he has looked good in his last two. Yeah, sure has. Uh, uh, looked good, you know, uh, uh, maybe farther back than that. Uh, having won three out of his last four races. He won a listed stakes at uh, Prairie Meadows last time and another listed stakes at Oaklawn Park. Before that, kind of threw in a clunker in there uh, with a seventh place finish it at Oaklawn Park. And and then before that, another stakes win that was in an Iowa bred race. So the horse is in very good form right now. The local horse, um, I guess, tackling the toughest field uh, uh, as of late. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he faded a bit in the Travers last year, but uh, he beat some decent horses in the Iowa Derby. But I'll agree with you, this is his toughest test yet, uh, because I, I do think this is a very good field for a grade three race. Uh, Eight Life Grand, the, the only bad one really was the beginning of the year, the start of the year. So that was off a layoff. So I'm going to excuse that one in his last two. Really good. He's a horse who rallies, and he's done it often, as I said, seven out of nine at Prairie Meadows. And we're going to look at the time form U.S. pace projector now, and we'll see that they have that big red button up top, Matt. Fast pace projected here, and they're talking about uh, a Fleet Ridge, a long shot who ran well in this race last year, uh, closely uh, stalked by horses like Skippy Longstocking, Frosted Grace, who we're going to talk about in a minute, and also Promise Keeper and Giant Game, who aren't throwouts in this Corn Oscar handicap. Yeah, and, and uh, Fleet Ridge uh, was a winner of his last race. It was a starter handicap with the $20,000 uh, condition on it, but uh, it was a front-running effort. It was a front-running effort, and it looks like a fast pace is expected here. So that could be a little bit tougher for him, a long shot. Uh, but also Skippy Longstocking and some other contenders here. We'll have to see how that pace unfolds. But they're saying contentious at Time Form US this time for the uh, for the Cornhusker. You see uh, Ain't Life Grand, the other horse, I think, that will vibe for favoritism a little farther back, uh, the number 10 there on the graphic. Going back to the field, though, Matt, yeah, we talked about the two probable favorites. But then there, I think there are three horses that are really close. Uh, close behind, at, at least as how it looks on paper, they should be wagered. We can start with Frosted Grace, who has never been better for trainer uh, Robertino Diodoro. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, has never been better. In his last five races, Brian, he has been for first or second, and he's been going every other race. Second, then win. Second, then win. Um, and most recently, uh, with Frosted Grace, uh, he was the winner of a Grade Three at Lone Star at Lone Star Park, then a second at Oaklawn Park, and before that, a win in an allowance at Oaklawn Park, a second at Oaklawn, and a win in the in uh, at another allowance at Oaklawn Park. 
So, uh, yeah, this Theodora horse is in really good form uh, and uh, on a track that he likes. Yeah, the, the one thing about Frosted Grace that I don't love in this spot, maybe the, maybe the pace, although he can rally a bit, but I, I always feel like Frosted Grace is just a little bit better shorter. So the fact that this is nine furlongs and not a mile like the Steve Sexton, grade three Steve mm -hmm. Sexton mile last time was, or maybe even a mile 16th. I think that might hurt his chances, but boy, we've seen Diodoro get horses good, and and this is a horse who is getting good, so certainly a threat in here. Another horse we have to talk about, Matt, is Warrant. Uh, Warrant was actually the favorite in the Corn Husker handicap last year, and he disappointed as a third place finisher. Warrant's been running long lately, so I, I'm not sure what to expect, but he's got a lot of back class, and he comes from a good bar. Yeah, long. For sure, Brian, uh, his last race was at Belmont Park in the Brooklyn Handicap, where uh, he finished fourth. Uh, before that, he did have a win in a listed stake at uh, Churchill Downs and third in the another one in the Temperance Hill. Yeah, those last three races are all at a mile and a half. But of course, Warren has done it at different distances. Don't forget, he almost won the Santa Anita Handicap back in 2022. The grade one at a mile and a quarter. Warren is always dangerous. Uh, but yeah, I wonder coming out of three straight mile and a half races. Uh, another horse that we said, uh, like uh, Frosted Grace, coming in never better is Call Me Fast, Matt. And if, if you're a believer of Rattle and Roll, which I think we both are, especially after his good second place finish in the Foster last time, Call Me Fast last two races where he was second. To rattle and roll both of those uh his form is very good coming into this corn husband yeah uh, those grade threes at churchill down second in the blame second in the ben ally uh, uh didn't do as well in a grade three at oak lawn park but uh uh won a couple of allowances uh at that arkansas track also um got a little bit of versatility sometimes he likes to be out front setting the pace but uh other times he'll sit off in a stalking position yeah yeah and i think nine furlongs is a good uh distance for him and i think he will sit off this fast pace and i think he has a really good shot coming off that good form uh call me fast the number three horse we could also talk about promise keeper who is a greatest stakes winner in the past and giant game who also has some back class both of them are interesting long shots coming from the inside post positions of the corn Oscar. Yeah, giant game is for uh is for Dale Romans uh and and had a nice allowance win last time uh prepping for this. Um he's another one of those horses that might be uh part of the pace. Yeah, giant game seems to be rounding back into form. He was third in the Breeders Cup Juvenile a couple years ago and he he didn't have it in a couple starts last year, but uh, he is rounding back into form. So it makes me not this time is is a sire I've really grown to like, and it makes me think Giant Game is a is an interesting long shot in this Corn Oscar field. Matt, we went through three nice fields: boom, boom, boom at Belmont, at uh, Horseshoe Indianapolis, and at Prairie Meadows. It's time to make our top picks in these interesting betting races. I'm going to let you go first. We'll start with what we just finished with the corn husker yeah brian and you and you say nice races and i agree uh, nice races to me in these cases are uh i don't know uh, uh these don't feel like races where i like i'm seeing any favorites that you know are the kind where it's like wow that there's no way they're gonna beat beat that horse uh, uh so I, I think i'm tending to higher prices than usual in in all three of these but i'll start with the uh with the corn husker um i'm gonna take a shot with uh, the diodoro horse um diodoro can get them going diodoro can be sneaky and win some big races so i am picking frosted grace yeah frosted grace certainly one of uh several in the corn husker with a shot i like the local horse i think the local horse is really good i like the way this race sets up for his rally with that uh, again time form us pace projection of a pretty fast pace i like ain't life grand i if this was any other track i i probably wouldn't be making him my top pick but at prairie meadows i like ain't life is grand to pick him up in the stretch as he's done so many times 
I'm going to disagree with you as far as the favorites because there is one of these three races where I really do fear the favorite. And while there were several horses I looked at in the MEM Derby, I could not get away from Brad Cox and verifying. Yeah, I don't blame you on that, Brian. He is certainly the horse to beat, but I don't know. You know, uh, uh, hasn't gotten to the winner's circle uh, recently. I know maybe those races were a little tough and it's hard to bet against uh, Brad Cox, but I don't know. Uh, Brad Cox means that he's probably going to get over bet in the Indiana Derby. Maybe I'm being sentimental. Brian knows I'm that kind of guy. I'm going to go with the uh, Larry Ravelli horse, hoping that uh, he gets to win a big stakes race on the heels of uh, two Phil's retirement. I like that this horse was supplemented into the field. Uh, Ravelli's got him going good. Um, and, and really, uh, he's not the kind of guy that is going to encourage his owners to put up a supplemental fee. Uh, if he doesn't think they've got a really good choice. So act a fool for me in the Indiana Derby. Yeah, there's a lot of good points there. And uh, act a fool was very good on the dirt at Hawthorne. But my favorite race from act a fool so far is a turf race. So I, I, I might have mud in my eye at the end of this, <laughs> but I'm just thinking he's got a bigger future on turf, but a very, very interesting horse. And that Hawthorne Derby, do not sleep on act a fool. If it doesn't happen Saturday here at Indiana, I think he may have a big win down the road, but it might come on turf. The Belmont Derby, Matt, probably the best race of the three. It's the biggest grade one. It's 750000 and a lot of potential winners. Who'd you go with? Yeah, and it's part of a, a, a big card at Belmont Park with several other uh, graded stakes races. Um, yeah, you know, I, I once again, I'm not going to go with the favorites, I, I'm not going to go with the Europeans. Um, you know me, I'm usually always on Charlie Appleby, uh, but, you know, they're going to be tough. I don't know. I guess maybe it's crazy to think that neat, that the winner isn't going to be one of those two Europeans, but I'm going to go with a horse that has really good recent form. That's the Mark Cassie horse, Web Slinger. Yeah, and, and surprisingly, I, I'm going with what you've uh, talked about over the years as far as Web Slinger. I, I think he's due, due, due for a loss. Uh, I don't know if that's handicapping or just some sort of uh, uh, strange uh, uh, coincidences where horses can't string together long winning streaks, especially in big races. So I, I have a feeling Web Slinger's not going to win that, I'm sorry to say. And uh, the Euros are tough. The Foxes off those races getting ready and then running in the English Derby. Uh, Silver now, we already know he's really good. I think Far Bridge still could be any kind. There's a few others who could be any kind. Kalik is a danger close to the pace, having won the Pennine Ridge, the prep for this. But I landed on the horse who I think is going to be on the lead, Wizard of Westwood. Uh, I had him at 12 to 1 on the morning line. I think he'll probably even be higher than that coming from California. I don't think he'll be shown much respect. Maybe he won't be much higher because Johnny V's on him, but that's another reason I like him. Wizard of Westwood getting on the lead, slowing things down, and seeing how far he can go in this Belmont Derby. Ooh, that was a packed show, Matt. Uh, can I get a parting shot from you as always? Absolutely. I just want to make my parting shot, adding one more thing about the, uh, the, the Belmont Derby, talking about redistricting. Chad Brown's other horse. I was surprised to see Chad put this horse in here. I saw this horse's maiden special weight win, and it was super impressive. A tremendous, tremendous turn of foot down the straight, down the stretch to easily dispatch that field. But to see him come into this grade one when there are so many more options coming up uh, at Saratoga for him i don't know uh probably gonna get really big odds for a chad brown horse if you're looking for a long shot yeah redistricting is is a horse i fear i mean he could be anything and we've seen horses like Taba win the san anita derby in his second career start this is a loaded field at 10 furlongs though to start yeah to make your second career start as good as he may be it'll be tough for him to win but yeah, he could be uh, a month from now. We could be saying he's the best young turf horse in the country. So 
We'll see. And you'll see. And hopefully you'll win. We appreciate you watching Horse Center every week. Matt and I love doing the show for you. If you haven't yet uh, subscribed, hit the notification, turn on the notifications, leaving a comment, all of the above. Do it now for us. We love it. Uh, thanks to Candace Curtis for the great race graphics she provides every week here at Horse Center. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. They're our sponsor. And Timeform US for those pace projectors Matt and I like to use every week. All right, Matt, full show. We're out of here. Next week, we're going to be talking nothing but Saratoga, which sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. For, for now, we'll see you then right here on Horse Center. <laughs>